Gabriel Garcia Marquez surpassed Miguel de Cervantes as the most translated author from Spanish, thus fulfilling the prophetic oath he made years before writing 100 Years of Solitude. I'm going to write something that will be read more than Don Quixote. The story of the Buen D has had such an impact on universal culture that it has inspired songs, video games, movies, insect names, and has been translated into almost 50 languages, although it is not called the same in all of them. What language is the oath of the seventh descendant titled in? Why is there a Japanese movie? The one about the book if Garcia Marquez always refused to have it adapted for the cinema. What millionaire offers from famous directors did he reject? And how much did Netflix pay to be able to make the series that will be released soon? Hey, what else readers? Luis Miguel here in another video from the literary shelf and this is the third part of the series 100 Years of Solitude in 100 Facts. In the first two videos, I told you 50 interesting facts, and in this third part, we're going to learn another 25 facts that demonstrate the incredible impact this book has had. It wouldn't have been possible without Julio Cortes. In fact, that's where we left off in the last video, when I told you that part of the success of 100 Years of Solitude was due to the amazing promotion given to it by friends from Boom, Carlos Fuentes, Mario Vargas Llosa, and Julio Cortaza. I've already talked about the first two authors, so let's move on to the third one, Julio Cortaza and the little piece of advice he gave Garcia Marquez so that his novel would become a worldwide phenomenon. Four years before 100 Years of Solitude came out, Julio Cortaza had published Hopscotch, and with its success in Latin America, it began to be translated into other languages, including English. This translation was done by Gregory Rabassa, an American translator, and it was so good that in 1967 it won the National Book Award. That same year, 100 Years of Solitude was published and, as we saw in the previous video, it was a bestseller from the first week, so offers to translate it were quick to come. One of the first was from the American publisher Harper Collins, and this is the telegram in which the publisher asked Garcia Marquez's literary staff, Carmen Balcells, to sell him the English translation rights. This publisher already had the translation rights to Garcia Marquez's previous works, for which it had paid $1,000. And remember this figure well because later I will tell you about other things that have nothing to do with this. Once the deal was accepted, it was necessary to find a translator, and that's where Julio Cortazar comes in with a little advice that would define the international direction of 100 years of solitude. The Argentine writer suggested to Garcia Marquez that he leave the translation of his new novel in the hands of Rabaza, but there was a problem. At that time, the translator was working on the Banana Trilogy by Miguel Ángel de Asturias and if Garcia Marquez wanted Rabaza to translate the book, he would have had to wait three years. But Garcia Marquez was patient, he waited for him and he would never regret that decision. Many rightly claim that the success of this translation was what opened the international path for Garcia Marquez, which would later lead him to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. The translation was so good that Garcia Marquez once said in one of those exaggerated phrases that he used to say that Rabaza's version in English was better than his own in Spanish. But because of Rabaza's delay, English was not the first foreign language to tell the story of the good morning, but Italian. And the story of the translation of 100 Years of Solitude into this language is very interesting. It turns out that even before finishing 100 Years of Solitude in Spanish, Garcia Marquez signed a pre-contract for 100 Years of Solitude to be translated and published in Italy. Months later, translator Enrico Senior began working on the Italian version, but he only had a month to translate the work, which is why the result was a fiasco. So much so that when the publishers revised it, they had to almost completely rewrite it. Nevertheless, the book was a bestseller. Centani de Solitudine sold 150,000 copies in its first six months. In total, 100 Years of Solitude has been translated into 49 languages, and the translation history of each one is full of curiosities, some of which I tell you about in my video about my collection of 23 translations of 100 Years of Solitude. I now have 26, which is why I recommend that you go to my article on the blog elestandeliterario.com where you can find all the translations with photos of the cover, the first page, and a lot of interesting information. That's why in this video I'm going to tell you a couple of interesting facts about translations of 100 Years of Solitude, some of which were pirated. For example, the Chinese translation. And the Chinese are definitely always making pirated copies of everything, right? Imagine that when Garcia Marquez found out about this piracy in 1990, 
he gave the order that no work of his would ever be published in Chinese because that was a country of pirates, according to his own words. But later he changed his mind and sold the rights for a million dollars. Remember the $1,000 for the previous works that I told you about earlier? Now for this one, only a million. The person in charge of translating the book was Jay, who took a year to complete the Chinese version. In an interview, the translator said that the hardest thing to translate were words like, Kachako, which is how we in Colombia refer to people from the capital, Bogota, in a somewhat derogatory way. And expressions like, fingers crossed, evil eye, or, invalid shirt. For the latter, the translator confessed that he based it on the interpretation of Gregory Rabasa, the English translator, but the Chinese translation was neither the only one based on Rabasa's nor the only pirated one. The first Thai translation was made in 1986, it was also based on Rabasa's and was rarely authorized. This Thai translation that I have is authorized and direct from Spanish. It was made in 2016 and I have two because two very beautiful people gave them to me and each added a very curious little detail to each gift. One was this Gabo finger puppet and the other was a bookmark made of elephant poop. In addition to the pirated translations, there were some that were censored, such as the Russian one in 1970, which was censored by the Soviet regime and some supposedly erotic parts were omitted. It was later retranslated, but several subsequent studies found that the first translation, although incomplete, better maintained Garcia Marquez's lyrical and poetic tone, so it was reprinted, but this time incorporating the omitted passages. And that is precisely the edition that I have. And speaking of censorship, it is curious that 100 Years of Solitude and other works by Garcia Marquez such as La Mala were censored by the Franco regime in Spain, as were other works by authors of the boom period, such as Rayuela by Cortázar, La Region Mas Transparente by Carlos Fuentes, Pedro Paramo by Juan Rolfo and others. According to reports, the censorship was due to indecent morality or ideas contrary to the regime. Something curious because in 100 Years of Solitude there are many sexual scenes and also a strong criticism of dictatorship. But returning to the translations, just as the Chinese translator confessed that he had difficulty with some words, others said that they had problems with the title. In his memoirs, Rabasa, the American translator, said that he had several difficulties with the title since it was written because one option could have been, A Hundred Years of Loneliness, which was different from the one that ended up being, One Hundred Years of Solitude, although in reality they mean almost the same thing. However, he explains the reasons for choosing the latter in his book, so pause this video if you want to see it in more detail. Another translation that had several versions of the title was that of the Czech. The translator says that when he proposed the title Storoku Samoti, the editorial director suggested Stole Samoti, but the translator defended his version because although the meaning is the same, Shoroku has a rhythm, a melody that the other version does not. But what I find most interesting about this translation of the title is that there are some languages that change it a little or a lot. For example, in Indi the title is Centenary of Solitude. And in this edition in Bahasa, Indonesian, the title is 100 Years of Silence. But these changes are nothing compared to the Malay edition. Zumpa translates as I swear, Tuju 7 and that to Runan descendants. So the title would translate something like the oath of the seventh descendant. And the truth is I have no idea where that title comes from, because the seventh descendant of the good day never makes an oath. But the one who did make an oath was Garcia Marquez when in 1951 he said the following to his brother Gustavo Garcia Marquez while they were reviewing some drafts of the Oharasca. This is good, but I'm going to write something that will be read more than Don Quixote. And he kept his word. According to a study published by the Cervantes Institute in 2023, Garcia Marquez is the most translated Spanish language author in the world during this century. His most translated work is 100 Years of Solitude and that undoubtedly shows that it has been widely read, probably more than Don Quixote or at least in recent years. But since Don Quixote has been around for 350 more years, Cervantes' work surely takes the spot as the most widely read Spanish novel in history. What I wonder is, how did the translators deal with the word that Garcia Marquez invented in 100 Years of Solitude?
Jerapelinosos, because that word does not exist in Spanish and the only explanation is the sound it has in the sentence it is in, which says, they thought it was a new artifice of the gypsies who were returning with their centenary and discredited, going on and on with whistles and rattles, proclaiming the excellence of who knew what idiot would ensnare me with Jerapelinosos Jerusalemite geniuses. All the words in that sentence exist, even the adjective Jerolimitano, which I did not know, but which refers to something related to Jerusalem. And there are many other very Colombian words that the book includes and that are in the glossary of this edition of the RAE. And for that reason, if you are going to read 100 Years of Solitude, I highly recommend that you do so in this edition. And speaking of editions, among those I have in my collection of translations, there are some very curious ones, especially because of the cover design, like this one in Arabic. I don't know what they were thinking. The editors of this edition used a painting by Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo's husband. Did they think Garcia Marquez was Mexican? Well, he was a little bit, since I live there, but most editions have tropical or wild themes, but one of the most popular is this one in Japanese that went viral this year. And listen to this, in three months this edition sold more copies in Japan than the others combined in 52 years. The cover illustrations are alluding to the work, such as bananas, a rooster, an ant, a butterfly, a telescope, a laboratory, and a gun, in addition to characters that appear to be Melchiades and Colonel Aureliano Wendia. According to the designer, the style of these six images is inspired by the illustrations of Jose Celestino Muti's Botanical Expedition, and that's why, for example, these orchids are like Jose Celestino Mutis's. Another very important scientist who visited Colombia on natural expeditions was the German explorer Alexander von Humboldt, who is in fact mentioned in 100 Years of Solitude, as are Nostradamus, Francis Drake, Sir Wardle Raleigh, Vidal Venerable and many others, real and fictitious. And I really like that because in 100 Years of Solitude Garcia Marquez pays homage to his writer friends by making hidden references to their works. For example, Victor Hugue, the character from the Enlightenment period of Cuban writer Alejo Carpentier, whom Jose Arcadio met on his travels around the world. Lorenzo Gabalin, a colonel from the Mexican Revolution exiled in Macondo, who witnessed the heroism of his friend Artemio Cruz, is also mentioned. And then comes my favorite, Jokadug, the son of the sorceress from the character in Hopscotch, who is mentioned with a giant spoiler for this novel by Cortazar, which, by the way, I have made dozens of videos analyzing and that I will leave in the description. But Garcia Marquez does not only make references to characters or situations from books by other authors, but also to his own. In 100 Years of Solitude, I have counted more than 10 references to novels, short stories or newspaper columns that are integrated into 100 Years of Solitude, thus creating the Gaboverse. If you want me to make a video about this Gaboverse and the situations or characters from other books by Garcia Marquez mentioned in 100 Years of Solitude, leave a butterfly in the comments and I will make a video about that. For now, I will quickly leave you all the references here with a brief explanation. And just as 100 Years of Solitude references other texts, other texts also reference 100 Years of Solitude, from songs to famous television series to city streets. There are dozens of songs from many genres that reference characters, situations, or places from the book. I made a playlist on YouTube Music with all of those songs. There are more than 15, but here I'm going to tell you some of my favorites. Valinato Nobel is a song composed by Rafael Escalona for Garcia Marquez when he won the award. It is performed by the brothers and in addition to referring to 100 Years of Solitude, it also mentions elements from other works such as No One Writes to the Colonel. Charlie Garcia's Superheroes has a verse that says, I see the maids in the square dressed to fall in love living 100 Years of Solitude. The Polish band Midis has a very good song called Under the Rain of Little Yellow Flowers, which in one verse says, We will walk slowly side by side until the end of everything to start again under the rain of little yellow flowers. Sentinet and Solitudine and Terra de Libertad are two albums by the Italian band Moderna City Ramblers, who have songs inspired by the work of Garcia Marquez such as Macondo Express, Olalo do Aureliano or Remedios, La Bella. And the thing is that Remedios continues to inspire men inside and outside the novel, 
because there is another song by an American band called Remedios de Beauty. In the description I leave you the link to the playlist that contains other great songs like Macondo by the Hispanics, but as I said, 100 Years of Solitude has not only inspired songs, but also street names. In Spain, more specifically in Caceres, there is a neighborhood that has streets named after Latin American writers and characters from 100 Years of Solitude. For example, there is the street 100 Years of Solitude, Jose Arcadio Buenia Aureliano Segund and Coronel Aureliano Buenia, which by the way is also in Macondo and that reminds me that years ago in Colombia they tried to do something similar by changing the name of Garcia Marquez's hometown in Colombia, Aracataca. In 2006, the mayor of this town in Magdalena held a referendum to change the name from Aracataca to Macondo, but they only got half of the votes needed to do so. Let's also remember that there was the Macondo Banana Plantation in Aracataca from which Garcia Marquez took his name for his town. As I mentioned in fact number 6, the interesting thing is that the characters from 100 Years of Solitude have also given names to hundreds of Twitter profiles, including Ahora X, where there are dozens of Ursulas and Garen, Jose Arcadio Buendia, and many more. And it's not just human beings with those names, but also animals or, well, insects. For example, in Colombia they discovered a new species of termite and named it Proniotermes macondianus in honor of Mac. And the thing is that 100 years of solitude is definitely everywhere, even in Friends. In episode 5 of the third season of this famous American series, Chandler appears with the book. The only bad thing is that it seems like he fell asleep reading it. There are also references to Gabo's novel in video games such as World of Warcraft, where there is a mission called 100 Years of Solitude. And what about the famous Disney movie Encanto, which is set in Colombia and makes references to Garcia Marquez's time when yellow butterflies appear. And so we enter the tricky world of 100 Years of Solitude films and adaptations. Because although Garcia Marquez was very close to cinema, he went so far as to say that he had written this novel so that it could not be adapted, at a time when he was in dispute with the film industry. I said that I had written 100 years of solitude against the film industry. Furthermore, when he was approached with proposals to adapt the book for the screen, he set certain conditions, some reasonable, such as that it be filmed and produced in Colombia with Colombian actors, but he also set impossible ones, such as this one he made to Harvey Weinstein, the producer of films such as Shakespeare in Love. Winstein proposed making the film with the Italian director Giuseppe Tornatori and Garcia Marquez said yes, but on the condition that the entire book had to be filmed, but that two-minute chapters had to be released, one each year, for 100 years. What the hell? But these were not the only directors and producers who asked Garcia Marquez for the rights to adapt the book. Garcia Marquez received many offers when he won the Nobel Prize and in the 70s the book achieved worldwide fame, but Garcia Marquez rejected each one of them, always with a mocking tone, a bit of a jerk. For example, Anthony Quinn, the Mexican director, said on a television program that he was willing to give him a million dollars. Garcia Marquez told him that he accepted the proposal on one condition, that it not be a million but two million dollars, one for him and one for the socialist revolution in Latin America. And with that, Queen stopped insisting. Later, in 1979, Forco Pola told him that she wanted to adapt the film, but the offer was never formally made. In spite of everything, the Japanese risked making a very free adaptation in 1984 called Saraba Jacobune. It is the story of a town where two cousins fall in love and are forbidden to sleep together because there is a rumor that their children will be born with physical malformations and other illnesses. And although Garcia Marquez always refused to have the book adapted into a film, in 1987 he said something a little more hopeful for anyone who wanted to adapt it. He said that 100 Years of Solitude would never be a film, but that it could be adapted into another format, for example, into a television series. And so, 32 years later, on the author's birthday, March 6, 2019, Netflix announced that it had acquired the rights to adapt 100 Years of Solitude into a series and that it met the requirements that Garcia Marquez always set. That it be filmed and produced in Colombia with Colombian actors and that it be not a film, but a series. To comply with all this, Netflix built a set the size of 70 soccer fields on the Arizona estate in Alvarado, Tolima. The topography and climate are similar to those of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, 
near where Macondo is described as being located in the novel. From Alvarado, you can see the backdrop of the Central Andes mountain range, emulating the Sierra Nevada and the climate that Macondo would have had. In addition, they planted 16,000 native Caribbean plants in the four Macondos, which they built, one for each of the renovations that the town and the house undergo during the novel. The series will have two seasons with eight episodes each, for a total of 16, directed by Argentine Alex Garcia Lopez, but also by Colombian Laura Mora. Each season covers around 50 years of history, but unlike the book, the series does not begin with the scene of Aureliano Wendia in the firing squad, but with a scene at the very end of the book that reveals something very important in the novel. Who narrates the story? And it seems that as representatives of Garcia Marquez, his sons Rodrigo and Gonzalo, the latter a film director, have been very close to the production, because in the end they were the ones who, as heirs of Garcia Marquez, had the adaptation rights and were the ones who signed the contract with Netflix, which I imagine was for a lot, a lot of money. However, for now no one knows exactly how much Netflix paid, because the agreement most certainly involved variable profits depending on the success and broadcasts of the series. We will have to see it, but according to the previews, trailers and little things I have learned, the series promises to do justice to this impressive novel by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. If you want to know more curiosities about this hour, watch all my videos of the series 100 Years of Solitude in 100 facts here and tell me in the comments which one you liked the most from this third part. See you in the next video and until then, have a good read, bye!